Friday morning or Thursday morning by my coworkers, and I looked up some dude on the internet and used his shit. What tweaked a few things like I wanted Marquette going further and because I wanted to root for him. And what I got out of that was the Furman. <laughs> oh shit! Really? Wow. So yeah. So I am currently in fourth place with the most points available to me, and I'm like in the 90th percentile of the nation. <laughs> nice. I mean, Bracket. Kentucky's got a better chance of winning after the last couple of days. What I need to happen in order to win my bracket <laughs> is I need Creighton to win today. If Creighton wins today, I will probably win my company's pool. Awesome. Because the person that's above me's bracket looks exactly like mine. And she's got 1,700 points available to me. I got 1,740. And the difference in our brackets is Creighton. <laughs> Interesting. That and I had, like, I had teams like some of these big teams that went out. I had, I didn't take them all the way to the Final Four. Like, I don't think I have Arizona and Purdue in my Final Four. So those, them falling out is, yeah. In fact, I had Arizona going out relatively early. And that's why I think I'm still. All right. Uh, hey, Rick, do you follow the channel at all? Our channel? This channel? No, nope, I had not. Okay. If you do, I can make you a moderator. Uh. And then that'll also get us to 69 total followers. So that's my ultimate goal. Nice. <laughs> on, on Twitch. He's on Twitch. Yeah. Oh, okay. How great would it be? Yeah. We had yeah, the, we are trying we to had, We had the fifth nerd to the podcast. And it's to get to 69 followers. <laughs> oh, I want to make this full screen now. <clears throat> I don't know, um, Kaim, are you following the channel? That'll that'll put us over sixty-nine. Uh oh. Let's see rolls bonuses. There we go. That's what I like to see. Um, Sorry, I'm talking to chat. <laughs> In case oh, you weren't aware. Talk away. I don't talk to chat. I actually had discussion with people that you can't talk to the chat because I end up messing shit up. I can't have the chat up while we're, especially when I'm DMing, because there's already enough to worry about. And then I don't know what you're talking about. It's easy, John. It's easy. And you're just you're just Superman. <laughs> Says the guy go. that barely gets audio right, much less four people <laughs> on stream. And but he can describe a centaur cock real well. Yeah, he can. <laughs> Oh, reaction economy. Oh, I should have known you were Goonies. Isn't that your name on many things? My email. Yeah, that's it. And it follows everything around. It's been there since school. <laughs> Forever. Ever. Hey. So much so, when he DM'd for the first time, his first adventure was based on the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and was uh, fucking he, amazing. He, he didn't like... No, I loved slide, it. Finding the, finding the pirate ship and escaping it. I it loved it. I loved it. Flip, Flip had so much fun. Grabbing coins he shouldn't have been grabbing and disappearing from the party. And <laughs> We had a... Uh, uh... The boss fight was, I think, three goblins representing the Fratellis and an ogre for sloth. <laughs> Alright, I need to really get coffee. Cool. Oh, this is scary. Um, oh, yeah. Death and dying is weird. It's kind of like the mechanic... Dave was thrown out there in our campaign where you, you get penalized for bouncing up and down. Yeah. It makes sense when you start actually doing it. 
because like when you go down you're you're dying one and when you get saved or healed at that point and come back up you're now wounded one and if you go down if you go to zero hit points while you're wounded one you become dying two and then, so you you're, have these you're conditions just, that apply just because you and come back just, up yeah just because you come back up doesn't completely erase the fact that you were down yeah that those wounds stay with you and then if you ever end up what is it dying for you're dead i think dying for is dead yeah so they just that those and each one of those conditions adds more crap to what you can wounded and can't doesn't, do. Wounded doesn't just automatically fall off either. I mean, you could no. heal yourself up to full hit points, and then there's the next a, combat go down again, and wounded still still is there. Yep, and there's a there's a feat called treat wounds, which allows you to remove those and also heals. So it it is the feats are actually really kind of the neat what I always really kind of liked about Pathfinder is that it really felt like you were building out a character like like it felt like a skill tree in Diablo as opposed to just getting stuff for your initial first choice Ryan you've been mighty quiet this morning all week on chat too even I have no yeah, idea I mean, what you're even thinking for character. Well, I'm busy at work, and I have yep. no idea where to start with Pathfinder. So, <laughs> well, I don't know how I can contribute yet. So, <laughs> I know it. I guess just be yeah. you, Ryan. Well, he's he's he is he is doing what he should be doing right now: listening and observing, and trying to glean points off of anything. Um. I, I am intentionally keeping us in the core rulebook, Ryan, <laughs> for your sake, because this can spin wildly out of control <laughs> with options. There are already many, many options. Um, it's the same basic, your same basic classes from D&D &D 5. Well, you know, this is all probably a discussion I could... We could oh, I, have, I, have, I have a character, but... I'm going to wait until I hear the conversation to see what we're playing with, what we're not playing with, what ancestries we're playing with, what, like, oh, okay. I'm just going to, yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, I got to ride it out and we'll, we'll pick it when it's time. That's, cool. that's yeah. what I'm at. I mean, I'm okay. sticking with the plan that I had, but, uh, oh, there's a lot of little stuff like, you know, if, as far as like the, um, sub, uh, so what is it? heritage yeah your heritage um like i really i'm gonna kind of base it on what makes sense you know if uh if we live in the mountains or something i go with the cold you know if, if we mm -hmm. if I spend too much time with someone who's throwing fire bombs i maybe go with the fire otherwise there's you know there's other options so i kind of want to know how things are going to build that backstory with uh with the pieces of it but um it's all really high level shit on this list other than this, which I have there, I think I can put this list away because that will be stuff we learn as we play. Also, John really wants us to have rhyming, a very sound alike. No, game, so that it's no, really, no, no, really no, 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 no. Eris, Barris, and Jerris, two of the three of you are here, motherfucker. No. <laughs> <laughs> and none of them knew each other. Selecting names yeah, yeah, before yeah. they came into the campaign name. at different times. Well, I asked yeah. Ryan how to say his name, and he said, "Sure, that works." And I went, "All right." <laughs> I wish I would have said something different. <laughs> no, I, don't I don't know, know how else we would have done it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were all spelled, all spelled a little differently Her, too. Jerice. Jerice. Oh, I'm going to refresh my coffee quick. I'll be right back. Yeah. All right. Oh, take a shit if you need to shit. Go pee if you need to pee. The show's starting in a couple minutes. Now that John's riding the DM chair again, I can probably start us right now. <laughs> so are we doing... Uh, uh, like, I mean, that are feels talking, right. Are we sticking to the common ancestries, or are we... Yeah. Yeah. If, if you're looking, like, in the archives of Nethys, the uh, common ones are the ones from the players, essentially the player's handbook. 
So those are the ones that we're sticking with. Yep, the basic, okay. the the basic core rule book. So there's like six, but then uh, if you look at human, you can actually get half elf and half orc out of them. I was just in love with the Kitsune, so. <laughs> we all, you can always beg the DM, and if you've got a I good can. flavor reason. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at the cat folk, but not this time. Maybe we'll do a one shot where we get to do those. <sighs> That's not good. Note to self, I can't move quickly with this big-ass blue coffee mug. It's more like a bowl, and like any bowl, it slops Josh, really it's easily. Not a soup cup? Josh, it's my coffee cup. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's a handled soup bowl, but I use it for coffee. Hey, man, you do you. Um, FYI, hey, my dryer's Rick, if, done. if we're playing uh, and you have chat pulled up, if you type exclamation point S and then a space, you can put in what like a title. A show title. If show someone title. says something dumb or funny or yeah. so if somebody says for a show title. If somebody says pooptacular, you can put exclamation point S space pooptacular and that'll submit it as a show title. Just like that. Yep. Pooptacular is now a show title. I will usually um Say someone show title that because I don't have the chat up. Or I will say that would make a great show title. And then there's a link I just put in chat where you can go and vote on them. Oh, um. I'm going to do that at the end. Um, yeah, I just wanted to see what it looked like right when you were saying this is how it works. I'm like, hey, <laughs> I'm going to do it. Um. Nope, I want. This is how we do it. Oh, crap. What is the freaking. What is the frickin' frequency, Kenneth? I'll be right back. Wow. It's your bins and bins. I would not have been able to take it there. That was amazing. All right. I can't think of Keep it. Keep disappearing for half seconds. So anybody that's in chat, exclamation point S, put a space, and then put in whatever phrase or title you want. That's how you do it. I can't think of the command right now to put those instructions in. I should probably write that down. What the hell book is that one in? Well, it's got to be in here, then. Is it a uh, vote? Huh, it works. Huh, huh, look at that. <laughs> oh, man, he's going to furt it right now, isn't he? Just like that. Furt. They were gone. Ah, he furted. Furt. Oh. All right, I'm turning this on. And then John can just deal with it when he gets back. You nerds ready? Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Two Nerds, One Quest. I am your host, Norm. <laughs> and this is going to be funny because John's going to be surprised. The guy you to point at me? The guy to my immediate right is Mr. DMJC. He is going to be running this. Uh, the man directly below me on your screen is Genius. The man directly below him is Cooch. The man directly below him is is the new man on the totem pole. And actually, in this totem pole, he's the low man. Low Rick. man on the totem pole. How's everybody doing today? <laughs> good, good. good. I, was, I was going to make a um, gremlins joke about don't put water on the nerds, they multiply, and something about, well, I, I think we're fine as long as we don't feed them after midnight. <laughs> All of those rules point. are out the window. Some, oh, somebody hell. somebody watered Genius or fed Cooch after midnight because we, we pooped on uh. another player. Um, <laughs> you will notice that this is a little bit of a different setup 
we have five players now we have a map background we have a new actual quest that is going on and by quest i mean we scrapped D D for the time being and we are jumping tits first into pathfinder so with that being said john will be leading us through this john will be the dm again john will be uh the uh guru i don't know rick rick is pretty it seems like he's well versed in pathfinder well <laughs> well versed meaning probably better than us um he's the only other one with pathfinder 1e experience besides me it's been a hot minute oh yeah a hot minute is right <laughs> like <laughs> So the plan for today is to go through rules, regulations, kind of discuss things, um, maybe possibly start character creation. Uh, next week we'll continue or start character creation. And then depending upon how that goes, the week after will be, uh, assuming everybody is good and ready, will be uh, the beginning adventure question mark. Can we say adventure time? <laughs> is that copyrighted? <laughs> Might be Easter. I don't know which which weekend Easter falls in there. I don't know if we have three weeks or two weeks till then. Oh. Mm. I don't that have a good curious. answer to that. That would involve me recognizing and a calendar. As we all know, math is hard. Oh, of course, oh, of course. That is, that's like my Easter's anthem. The ninth, for this so. Easter's the ninth, so we have this week and next week. And yep. then it's Easter. No, nope. there's one more in there. Is there one more? In there? This week, next week. Say the nineteenth. Yes. Next week. The twenty-sixth, the second, the ninth. So we do have oh, three weeks. We do. Yep. Cool. So we can discuss how we want to do things. We can do. We can, well, we can discuss this off stream, but we can do rules today, character creation next week, uh, and then either start or do more rules talk. If we want to, we, we may, we may talk about character. Maybe we just talk a little bit at the end of the show about character creation without actually creating anything. I think, and then we'll create I would, next time. I don't know. Yeah, I think I would love to get a little bit of character creation and at least talk about the basics. Okay, you know, well, maybe let, not going into all the feats and stuff, but we'll see how far we get. Let's start with the easy thing. Let's start with the similarities between Fighting and Pathfinder. Uh, which there are some, there are several. I mean, one was spawned from the other. Uh, actually, let's go to the backstory. Let's back this way up to a glorious time when the third edition of D&D came out. There was a 3.5 edition then, and Watsy decided they wanted to go to 4E. When they went to 4E, they changed the system so drastically that this little company called Paizo decided they wanted to um, keep the same rules and just kind of tweak them for their own good using the open license. And they did, and they created Pathfinder. And it became wildly successful because 4E bombed with a lot of the tabletop audience. So welcome Paizo into the world. You know, the primary competitor to 4E was Pathfinder. 5E comes out then and kind of corrects a lot of the cracks a lot of the flaws, introduces a whole new group of people to it, simplifies the system, and Pathfinder starts thinking about doing, well, at that point, they had been thinking about doing a second edition already. And they come out with the second edition, completely remove any um, keyword, um, anything that could be possibly tied to Watsi from their system. They wrote the system to be their own, the second edition. Tweaked a few things, made a few things a bit simpler because their first game was incredibly crunchy, even more so than this one, which is hard to believe. And so now we have Pathfinder 2E going up against 5E. And well, Hasbro seems to be doing what they were doing before, <laughs> trying to go for the money instead of worrying about the players. And the cycle is repeating. And we're getting several more of these in... The problem is, is there's way more com competition out there now. We're going to get about three or four different more systems out there. And new licensing that won't be able to be revoked to 
take this stuff away from us as a community, which is a win for us as the players. So ultimately, I'd like to say thank you, Hasbro, for being greedy mofos. Although it pisses me off what you did. <laughs> so uh, similarities between Pathfinder 2E and D&D. Fantasy. It's elves, it's dwarves, it's dragons, it's all that good stuff, etc. Uh, it's still six core ability stats, all the same. Um, it's still a d20 roll with modifiers added to it versus a DC. Uh, it's still played on five foot grids. Um, it's the same dice you use. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's. I'm just listing general similarities. There's nothing else I can come up with off the top of my head. The differences uh, are in in the system itself. The there is there's more. <laughs> there's a lot more. Uh, I was talking pre-show about um, a long jump and high jump rules. Uh, there are rules for each of those, <laughs> as opposed to D and D five E has like. You just make an athletics check. Um, there's also less. There's no advantage. Advantage does not exist in the game. It's something that is not there. Um, and a big factor and a key factor and something that a lot of people keyed in on in this. Everything is free. All the rules for the game, the entire game system rules are free on a website called Archi Archives of Nethys. And Paizo actually endorses the site and wants players to use this. They just want people to play their game. And they trust that their content is compelling enough that people will throw money at them if they're enjoying themselves. And they do. And when Hasbro does something like what they did, they do it in droves and drive them out of their stock and force reprintings of certain things. Which the core rule book has been difficult to get a hold of recently. Um... So when, when we're talking about rolls, when you're rolling your dice and you're rolling your bonus, um, you get uh, bonuses to your roll. There are three types of bonuses. You get circumstance bonuses, status bonuses, and item bonuses. And you can only have one of each. So you can apply one circumstance bonus because if you had two different circumstance bonuses, they don't stack. Is that or, literally what it sounds like? Circumstances, like you get a bonus if you're like behind somebody behind. like you'll get a bonus if you're at like you have the higher ground anakin yes or you're behind cover or you've raised your shield mm -hmm. or the, the whatever the circumstance is adds a bonus to the situation I think um, one of the most common ones you're going to see in most games is flat-footed flat-footed yeah flat-footed and raising over the shield because you don't automatically get your shield added to your ac you have to spend an action to raise your shield. We'll get into that later. Um, I probably would have done Crixus in if we we had started playing with <laughs> that way. With us not knowing, <laughs> Crixus would have been like, I have a shield. It's just kind of here. <laughs> well, I have a shield. Why do I get, keep getting hit in the balls? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your, your shield is covering your feet, Cooch. Lift it up. Yeah. <laughs> your shield. You keep getting hit in the balls. You get your shield too high. <laughs> Lower. so accurate <laughs> um status bonuses uh they come from abilities or spells um or conditions you'll you'll have conditions uh, a lot of this stuff you'll see um in like the vision systems or perception system i should say um there are four different states of perception and depending on what state it is in there is bonuses <laughs> For it. What are you laughing at, Norm? <laughs> uh, I'm laughing at Kucha's title he just put in. I have a shield, why do I keep getting hit in the balls? <laughs> Fair. <laughs> where, where, JC, where you say there's just more, just looking at the, the, the Wanderer's guide that we were using for character creation, there are 35 different conditions in the game yes. that can be applied to creatures, characters, whatever. Just yeah. that there's just more more There's of everything 35 different conditions there are 40 or so backgrounds which is part of your character creation 
So, and also at level one, there are more choices to make that actually directly affect your character. Um, and get, we'll get into all that. That's really kind of interesting. It's it's some a video I saw recently, and I wanted to bring this up on the stream. I brought up pre-show. Someone described it as building a character in Pathfinder 2E is like putting together a Lego set. You are literally taking this piece, and I'm going to put this piece in, and I'm going to put this piece in, and I'm going to put this piece in, and those are going to be my stats then. Um, I like Legos. Uh, yeah. The last, uh, um, so yeah, status uh, bonuses. The last is item bonuses. So you get a plus one sword. You get plus one to your attack and damage, like you do in D and D. But if you have a plus one sword, you get a plus one to your attack. And if you have a ring that gives you a plus one to your attack, you only get plus one to your attack. Those two don't stack. So it's an interesting thing to consider when you are carrying um, what magical items you want to carry around to get bonuses in certain situations. And these plus ones are all very important because of another big difference between 5e and pathfinder 2e is their critical system a nat 20 is not a critical hit and a nat 1 is not a critical fail they do have something they do but they don't automatically crit hit and crit fail and the critical system in pathfinder 2e is based on 10. you will know your dc before you roll the die and if you are 10 over it or 10 below it, 10 over it's a critical hit, success, critical success. 10 below it or more, or more is a critical failure. Then, if you did roll a 20 or a 1, you would move it up 1 or down 1 on the scale. And that scale is critical success, success, failure, critical failure. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of looking at Ryan here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, wouldn't most of the DC you have to beat be 12? So wouldn't it be almost impossible to get a critical most circumstances? That's the that's the next uh, thing is the numbers within Pathfinder. We're going to where nor your normal roles you're used to seeing are in D&D. Like we all get amazed when like the rogue rolls a 38 on a stealth check with all the bonuses and everything. 38s are normal. Like, rolls up into, like, anywhere between 1 and 50 is the scale of where rolls tend to happen within Pathfinder 2e. But, John, how would I do that with a d20? <laughs> <laughs> Plus you, Ryan. You still only roll a d20, but the bonuses uh, that you get, uh, your proficiency bonus on your skills those proficiency bonuses can get way off the top. Um, instead of having a singular proficiency bonus in, like in 5e, each skill has its own proficiency bonus. And like anything you could have proficiency in has its own proficiency bonus. And there are four levels of proficiency. Uh, I wrote this down earlier. Here there. Rick set them out for me and I wrote them down. It's trained is the first level. Expert, Master, and Legendary. And that's a 2, 4, 6, and 8 point bonus. Now John, that's only part of your proficiency bonus. What? You totally missed an opportunity. Mastery, and then Legend. Wait for it. Dairy. I did. I did. <laughs> I did. Oh, I'm rusty. I am, I am rusty. Then I haven't seen how I met your mother in... A few years, so. I'm on my, my I mean, of course, I've met your mother in the last few. <laughs> hey, oh, sip that coffee, victory sip. Yeah, I'm talking a lot. <laughs> I'm thankful for interruptions here. If you guys want to interrupt me at any point, please do. I can. Th I, I'll throw something out there for uh, as you're going sure. through these, John. Uh, you talked about the plus ten, minus ten. Yes. Uh, critical. Uh, in Pathfinder, unlike 5e, critical hits 
are not just double damage and critical failures are actually written into the rules where in 5e critical failures were th things some dms would house homebrew or house rule and if you rolled a one something bad would happen to you in pathfinder that's actually written in the rules uh, as an example if you use the trip action uh, any character can attempt to trip it's based on your athletics check you do an athletics check against the reflex save of the opposing character if you critically fail that you miss their dc by more than 10 you trip over your own feet and you you yourself wind up prone that's the rule so the, you really got to be careful about attempting things that you're not good at because <laughs> it can adversely affect you as well also with critical it's you double damage but then like weapons have what's called critical specialization effects and i think you have to i don't know if you have to feed or you have to be trained to a certain level to activate those but just looking at a basic dagger if you critical hit with a dagger it takes double damage but it also takes 1d6 persistent bleed damage on top of the double damage so each weapon has its own kind of specialization effect to it so you get the double damage and you get an additional effect to it same with when you trip or when you demoralize or you do all these actions when you critically succeed it's, it's there's a benefit to damage but there's also usually some sort of extra added benefit to it as well so it's critically important that i'm proficient in the crotch chop otherwise really bad <laughs> things could happen <laughs> yes exactly like exactly. you try to go for the crouch chop kook and you hit yourself in the nuts yep yeah and now and you're flat sorts of vomit and i i'm prone because i slipped on my own vomit i'm sure that's in the rules oh, fuck. <laughs> there is a specific crouch chop section that i did read over and uh i'd be more than happy to discuss that with you at a future date and time i, I forgot away from that conversation jeff i forgot i just outnumbered us on the wrestling front by getting rick in here <laughs> he was all into the wrestling stuff back then <laughs> Great. Like, like you and I are like the old school, old school wrestling guys, but these three were all in that like attitude era. Attitude stuff. era. <laughs> Not as far as oh, yeah, man. I went attitude era and off. <laughs> oh, so yeah, your skills. Um, you get your trained um, expert, mastery, or legendary um, training in them. You get your modifier. Uh, la, la, la. for your skill but also did I read that right your proficiency includes your level current yeah I read that so your current level plus your training level so if you are an expert in something you get a plus 4 <laughs> if you're a, a level 10 monk and you have a plus 4 for being an expert that's a 14, plus your dexterity modifier at that point is probably a plus 3. You have a plus 17 to your roll for a acrobatics roll. Yeah, that's how we're going to get up somewhere near 50. <laughs> if you roll if you roll in that 20, that's a 37. Okay, so that's a 37. You needed to hit a 40. Okay? So you, you failed. Your roll didn't hit, you failed, but you rolled in that 20, so it moves it up one, so it became a success. Ta-da! Interesting. Yeah, so let's just say, for example, you were level 20 and had a skill maxed out. Well, I'm going to say maxed out at 20, because I know that Pathfinder can go higher than that, but yeah. say, you're, say, you're, uh, say your dex is 20. So you're level 20, you get a plus 20 bonus if you're, uh, a, if you're legendary. Well, you get 8. You get 28. For being, you, you get 8 for being legendary, So and then you if you roll a 20... And then plus the five for the skill itself, you're pushing, you're over 50 at that point. Yeah. And that's assuming that you're not going past 20 with your, your uh, basic ability score. Yeah. So, so I might try to do that. Whatever that it is. That's level 20. You know, for this that's, first one, in a one shot, you're not going to see that. But um, No, but you will have, interesting thing, in character creation, you can start a character with an 18 in any of your given stats. It's possible to get there. Very possible and very likely you will have an 18 in at least one of your stats. Um, as proficiency, uh, um, that carries over to weapons too. Like you'll have trained and 
expert and master in legendary weapon proficiencies as well. So like when you're swinging with your axe, your bonus for swinging with it will be nice and toasty if you're good with it. Uh, another big difference between the two of them, and probably the biggest one, kind of the what a lot of people consider the crown jewel of the system, is the three action action economy in combat. In D&D 5e, we know we had our move action, our action, our bonus action, and our reaction. And you had to know what all those were. And trying to explain that to someone new, it's like, nah, it's hard to do. You can't well, use a bonus action as an action and vice versa. And exactly. And you have this. You can't, hold, you can't hold a bonus action. You can only hold an action. Hmm? That's a whole nother thing too. Holding and delaying. There are two different things you can do in Pathfinder 2e. But we'll get on to that conversation later. Um, in Pathfinder, you have three actions and a reaction on your turn. The, the round structure is the same. Uh, getting into initiative is a bit different, and we'll discuss that at some point. Um, but you have three actions, and whatever you do on your turn, like a lot of, like Rick said earlier, a lot of the spells take two actions to use. Um, but there's a whole list of actions you can do. The common ones are striding, which is your movement. You get to move your speed when you stride. Um, Striking is your attack. Um, but there are also things like hide. Uh, um, lifting your uh, shield was an action. Yes, lifting your shield, okay. dropping prone, interacting, leaping, seeking, um, standing. Trip. Uh, Jump. Step, stepping, Jump. which is moving five feet without triggering reactions. Um, yeah. Those are the big ones. Those are there's the a, ones. There's, on a, there. there's a fairly neat one you can do that's just called demoralize, and anybody can do this. Um, it, you can basically just shout at the opposing enemy and give them a minus one if you succeed on the roll. You just yep. yell at. You basically just yell at them and tell them how horrible they are, and they get demoralized and get a minus one circumstance bonus. And, and then there's an inch. just like pulling it out and and watching their <laughs> face fall, like basically, oh, yeah, wow. you actually. <laughs> That's what I'm up against. Oh, boy. Point of order is you actually have to shout. And there's a feat that you can take that you can just stare <laughs> at someone and get that same effect without saying anything. Because if, if you have to shout, they have to understand the language that you're talking to get the circumstance bonus. But if you take the feat, then all they have to do is be able to see you. Yeah. <laughs> and you can get that same bonus. But that's um, a way to use a third action. If you've used your two actions, for example, to do to cast a spell or something, you're sitting with a third action. You're like, well, I don't want to move and I don't want to do this. But something like demoralize is, is just a, a way to benefit your party with an action that you didn't really have a use for otherwise. Yeah. So if there, there, there will be moments where you go, well, I still have an action left. What can I use? Well, I mean, worst case scenario, demoralize. Um, what if I wanted to do attack twice on my turn? If you wanted to attack twice on your turn, Jeff, well, here's how you do it. Uh, your first attack is an attack. Your second attack on any given turn has a penalty of minus five. That's a circumstance penalty. Um, and then your third attack, should you happen to want to attack a third time, is a minus ten. Now, there are feats that can change that to minus four and minus eight, and I think they can even go lower, a step, one step lower. But I, I didn't, I don't know exactly where that is. But those... And again, remember, remember the rules of critical here. You miss by 10, you critically fail. Something bad's going to happen to you. So and you're swinging them... and that third attack at minus 10. Yeah, <laughs> critically failing can, can hurt. That'd be there. the best option, swing three times. Yeah, so uh, as oh. an example, then, I, I've got a character sheet open, just a generic character, and with the uh, normal attack bonus being plus seven, and the first attack gets the plus seven. The second attack still gets a plus two, but the third attack is at minus three. Yes. So you can see that that drops pretty quickly. 
it's just and it's not just attacks and you know this is or striking i should say the striking action. Strike, yeah. uh, there are other actions that are considered attack actions i think trip may be one of them i'd have to check but like trip might if, if you do something that is considered an attack action it has the attack flag on it that counts towards the multiple attack penalty so even though you may not be striking, you may be adding to that multiple attack penalty, and then when you do strike, you're at minus five already or minus ten. So you, you got to look at your actions and make sure they have that attack flag on them. They're going to start adding up to that multiple attack so, penalty on you. And yeah. does that work in reverse? Then does the trip, if you attack first and then trip, does that also get then the minus five penalty? Would if it's an attack, I can look real quick. Yeah, it is. It is. I, I, I looked at it. So, sure you have it. Uh, John, yeah. what you're saying Trip with the minus attack. four, minus eight, came in the chat says uh, attacks with ag agile weapons are minus four, minus eight. So it's, yes. it depends upon your weapon type as well. Yeah. So that's if you have agile weapons, that's like using agile weapons in 5e in your offhand. You don't experience the same penalties. Which makes sense the because if you're using something that is agile that would help you in your dexterity and your wielding of that weapon so the one thing i know you kind of brushed over with the movement john was your striding and your uh what was it Stride, step. stride step. and step, step. um the step, stepping yeah. is very important when you're surrounded i'm yes. guessing because uh you 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 touched over that it it keeps people from reacting so you don't get that that reaction that reactionary strike yep so that's the, let me that's really cool we should, yeah touch on that one let me jump in there real quick uh in, in pathfinder every creature does not automatically get attacks of opportunity that is not a thing it is a feat you have to take it so that really opens up the battlefield you can move around freely much more in pathfinder don't feel like once you're engaged with an enemy you're kind of locked on the battle map we've all done it in 5e where you walk up to an enemy and you start swinging and you're just okay i swing okay they swing and neither one of you wants to move because you're going to get bashed with a reaction it doesn't happen in 5e as much there are actually very few there's only one class that actually gets uh, attack of opportunity automatically and everybody else has to take it as a feat if they want it the enemies are the same way and yeah, the enemies have reactions um I wanted to get into something really quick because Rick mentioned it and he said flagged. I think the actual um, keyword for it is tag. I think it's tagged. Um, okay. Everything has tags. Like, um, I'm struggling to think of an example now. Like other concentrate. than. Concentrate. <laughs> yep. Uh, concentrate I'm... um it's, it's like your tags on your creatures too like um, it... humanoid or um oh what is that oh, there's a very move, specific move is, a, move is a tag there's um... a very specific example i'm trying to think of that came up in a video as i was researching this and that's not coming to me right now uh i'm just giving to like so you can lie and uh lying is tagged as deception, auditory, concentrate, linguistic, mental, and secret. Yes. And it's there's a lot of things um, on some of them. And other ones are just like move or or are they tie in with the um, skill score like athletics or something. I just wanted to highlight those because I know at times we will be reading rules and it's going to mention those. It's like it's like playing magic. It's, it's why we understand the rules of this game on the level that some of the people we play with are kind of like, huh? It's reading very specifically, and that's the great thing about that's always been with Jeff, having Jeff around for this, is he's really good at this. Rick is also very good at this. So, and Ryan is as well, because, I mean, Tom, <laughs> Tom's a bit lost, Tom's still learning. <laughs> Tom, I but would like, like to. I would like to go through a window. Uh, hey, so the window a... was tagged with closed. <laughs> that is a permissible action. I just happened to fail on my roll. You leave me alone. You can try, uh, Matt Mercer's. You can certainly try. So does, well, we were, does we were talking Finder, about in, oh, in relation to to uh, to magic does. Does Pathfinder have flavor text then with all of its tags? 
We are the flavor text. Um, no, there is there, there is a flavor to Pathfinder, um, that is, like honestly, for me, coming back to this world in Galarian and Pathfinder's creation for stuff. First of all, Pathfinder's goblins are a hundred percent better than Dean Watsi's goblins. In my my opinion, Pathfinder has the best flipping goblins anywhere, and. At some point, I will put uh, the Weeby Goblins adventure. In fact, that will probably be what the, the, the second someone's missing, we will do Weeby Goblins, which were the um, Pathfinder 1E uh, free RPG day adventures. Uh, I have those in the can. I'll just port them to 2E and we will play through those because they are freaking hilarious. Um, the the all the goblins call the people that are bigger than them long shanks and they chant um as they go into battle they chant uh rhymes and stuff and laugh and it's yeah i absolutely adore them and the the flavor of galarian as a whole is really cool they've kind of taken any and every setting you can think of from cold Norse um, Viking queens riding worms to uh, vampires and stuff to sci-fi things to um, crusade to jungle setting to pirate setting it's all it all exists in their big ass map so if if we ever want to tell any type of story like that within this world, we can absolutely do that. Um, what was I had somewhere I wanted to head next, and I forget what. Where were we? We were in the three action economy system. I think I kind of covered everything I had wanted to cover there. Uh, 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 uh. Is there anything else I want to get into? Um. Oh, the feats. how about? Uh, okay. I was going to say oh, about go the um, <clears throat> difference between uh, Long Rest and oh. the two. Because yeah. that was something we may want to know about before our first Long Rest. There, there's, no such, there's no such thing as a Long Rest. There's no such thing as a Short Rest. There's only Rest. You get to rest once per day for eight hours. And you get your Constitution modifier times your level and hit points back. And that's it. That so is no your rest. Dice, no. no hit dice. None of that. So, ju- no so John, if I'm at level after resting, if I'm at level one and my constitution uh, modifier is plus two, that means I only get two hit points back per rest. Yes, for eight hours of sleep. Yes, <laughs> Ryan's facial expression is great. <laughs> healing healing matters. Is, healing matters. Healing is important. <laughs> um. Merely a flesh wound is no longer a thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. It's a flesh wound that festers for days. Well, we can talk about wounds. <laughs> wounds come from dying. <laughs> when you fall to zero hit points on the battlefield, you become, uh, you, get, you acquire a condition called dying one. When you are given some hit points back, you come back from dying one. You remove dying one, but then you gain the condition wounded one. Should you fall again while you are wounded one, you become dying two. Oh. And so on and so forth. <laughs> come up from dying two, you become wounded two. If you fall while you're wounded two, you become dying three. And each of these conditions has things that you slowly deteriorate worse down a scale until you are dying for which is dead. Um, There is a feat, and this will lead into what I wanted to talk about next, is the feat system. Um, Feats. um, There's a feat, and I'll talk about this feat. Uh, It's called Tend Wounds, or... It's not cure Treat wounds. wounds. Treat. What? Treat wounds. Treat wounds. Like. That's it. You are able to use, um, uh, use it once per day, I think, to remove a wound. 
and then heal some amount of hit points. So it's a good feat to have. Uh, without it, the only other way to lose a wound is to rest. But do you lose a wound for resting eight hours? One wound level? I forget. I'm planning on dying, so I wasn't paying too much attention to those rules yet. <laughs> I should have looked that up. I plan on dying. Regret right. that. The it's fact that I don't know says dying. a lot about <laughs> the fact that I don't know says a lot about how confident I am in killing you. Yeah. Honestly, I should look that up. <laughs> I need to look that up because um, I, you know, I'm, attacking a creature that's down and dying raises the dying level by one. Wounded. Yep. You you have been seriously injured during a fight. Anytime you lose the dying condition, you become wounded one. If you didn't already have the condition, uh, increasing. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. The wounding condition ends if someone successfully restores hit points to you with treat wounds, or if you are restored to full hit points and rest for 10 minutes. Oh. So. Okay. So if you can get magically <laughs> healed to full and then rest for 10 yeah. minutes. And it looks like it removes the wounding condition, doesn't it? Doesn't. Oh, but that's like down by one. It just takes away the wounded condition. Oh, okay. So if you're wounded three and you get that, then you would just not be wounded anymore? That's what it sounds like. Okay, <clears throat> okay then I was misunderstanding it. And it's also so mentioned you're... In, in chat that it, uh, you can also go dying two from crits, like dying three if you're already wounded one. Like So if you get critted on when you're wounded, it bumps you that up makes extra, sense. an extra oh. dying level, I guess. Ooh. That's <laughs> so Pathfinder 2E seems more deadly. Just, just saying off the top. <laughs> so it definitely feels more uh, not as linear. Like listening to, to these rules and instructions for Pathfinder, it seems more open world. It seems more like World of Warcraft versus like the original Assassin's Creed, which is linear. That would be a good way of putting it. That's there is the the rule set is broader and more way more open than than five E for sure. All right. So I just uh, popped up treat wounds that you were talking about, and it, it's mm -hmm. a, a ten minute process. So that's where it's not just like, oh, you're wounded three in the middle of combat. Oh, look, treat wounds and yeah. keep going. It's no, you got to make it through combat to. Uh, is there a limit to how many times you can use it per day? Or is it just that 10 minute limit's the limit? Uh, once you use it on someone, they're immune to treat wounds for an hour. That's what that was. Um, doesn't, I don't see anything saying if you can use it multiple times a day or not. So okay. uh, there is it's available. something, uh, uh Dalvin in the chat says there's a feat that you can get called battle medicine, which lets you basically perform a very fast one action treat wounds during combat. Uh, cool. Treat wounds normally requires 10 minutes with limitations. Cool. So, but battle medicine sounds useful. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I want to say big props to Dalvin for <laughs> hopping in and sounds like he's a 2E uh, uh, guru. Knowledgeable. Knowledgeable. At least, if nothing else, it kind of sounds guruish to me. I mean, yeah, that or you found something good and copy pasted, <laughs> which is what I would do. <laughs> I'm trying to give him more credit. I know, jokes, people, jokes. Poke yeah, fun at us, not the listeners or viewers. Uh the feats. Feats in Pathfinder 2E are mandatory. It's part of the system. They aren't optional things every four levels. You have several feats. <laughs> you have a set of ancestry feats, which is your race. Your ancestry is race. Race from 5e is ancestry. Um, which, by the way, people, it's your bloodline. It's where you came from. It's your race. It's... <sighs> I, I, I have issues with renaming things for... Well... On the bright side, they made it simple anyway. because it's uh, it's ABC then. Yes, I do like that, which is very, very clever. Um, so you have ancestry feats that you'll take when you're at level one. Um, you have class feats that you'll take at level 
one, typically. And then there are skill feats that at every even level you can take skill feats. And then there's just a group of general feats available to everybody, which the aforementioned treat wounds is one of those general feats. It's a lot of feats. There are a lot of feats, and they have feat levels. So there's level one feats, level two feats, level three feats, level four feats. Some of them have prerequisites. Would you say that the core rulebook is 600 pages long? (laughs) Yes. Hey, John. (laughs) Yes. Would you say that at a higher level you would have a feat fetish? I. I'm just. I'm. Suddenly thinking we gotta dial back on how many times we're saying feats for fear that Twitch will shut us down. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, just don't show your just don't show your feats on stream. Just don't show. Oh wait, oh wait, wait, wait. Oh hell, here we go. I'm gonna get us banned from Twitch. Okay. <laughs> Let me find it. That's great. Let me find it. That's great. Do it. Oh no. Oh hell. Oh no 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 no. Yep. Here we go. I'm showing my feats on Twitch. <laughs> Jeez. You went a long way for that joke. Wow. Yes, I did. Wow. Yes, did I go did. a long way for that joke. Uh, I did. So, uh, talking prerequisites, I pulled up battle medicine that you had mentioned. Uh, the prerequisite is that you're trained in medicine to, to take this feat. Um, but then it has requirements that you're holding your healer's tools or wearing them and have a free hand. So, well, let's, let's, delve let's in... visit that for a second there, where you're talking about holding and free hands, because this is something that I was looking at when I was researching classes what we were, as we were building up to the stream here. I was looking at the fighter, and I was looking at using a bastard sword, which is a, a sword that can be wielded in one hand or two hands. And the action economy matters in this. If you're holding, if I was holding that bastard sword with two hands, and I want to do a feat, the fighter feat that allows you to like hold the enemy down with one of your hands and cause them to be flat-footed, but you have to have a free hand. So if I wanted to release one hand off the sword, that's actually a free action. I can do that without using action economy. But after I've done that, if I want to return that hand to the sword so I could swing again with two hands and get the benefit of the extra damage, I have to use an action to interact with the sword. So going from two hands to one is free. Going from one hand to two must be an action. So... It, it, the, as we're going through the rules and it says you have to have this in your hand or that to, to pull that out of your bag it's an action that uses your three turn action economy to do so I like that, it, that makes it very straightforward compared to what we were doing with with our two nerds shows is well hey DM can can I do this Um, yeah I guess you kind of can now it's like a specific yeah. to pull something mm-hmm. out of a bag it's a feat or I, a feat, a, I, I, an action I think that's a, a action. kind of a common thing that I've I've heard with kind of looking at what it is that there's and that's the the rules are very more very much more specific on things you can do where I think in 5e it's more of a can I do it situational kind of thing where yeah there's rules about it but there's not necessarily a you can or can't where I think there's more of a uh, oh, there's a situation here. There's a feat here. There's a skill here. There's an action here. There's something that defines what you're doing mm-hmm. in a lot of a lot more cases than in uh, 5e. Uh, interesting point about the action economy that I just thought of uh, when Rick was talking about the dropping and grabbing stuff. Um, moving and attacking and moving, you need to complete an action before you can take another action. So if you have 30 feet of movement and you want to move 15 feet and attack and then move 15 feet, that's all three of your actions because you have to complete the first action and be done with it. So moving that 15 feet, you need to, that action is over then. So you don't get to use the rest of that. That movement's lost at that point. So there's a bit more strategically moving Amongst the battlefield, there too. It's a lot of strategery. Strategery. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <clears throat> yeah, he's one of us. He's one of us, folks. Like we've known him a while. <laughs> High five, Rick. <laughs> oh yeah, for those. I mean, Tom kind of introduced him earlier, but uh, Rick was in my initial homebrew campaign with Ryan and Jeff. Rick was also on the Talking 1265 podcast with me and Tom. So 
Accurate. Been around. Um, I don't know that we. Rick, Rick and I went to uh, elementary school together, just not the same grade. Yeah. Same. same. I was there too. And Tom, Tom too. Yep. Tom was there too. <laughs> so we've the all known each other bastards. longer around for. Well, the Tom and I went there. to the same school. school all the way through, for, uh, first through twelve. And I've known Ryan since he was born. Yeah, well, fact. that happens. So, uh, where was I? Feats, yes. Um, I was actually going to ask uh, if Delvin had clarity on this. Because the feats, I believe when it says feat one, that's a level one feat. And it's feat two is a level two. And like feet seven, you that will be at level seven. You have access to those. That seems to fit with what I was looking at. Mm. Yeah, so that's right. I, I believe that's right. I just started looking at them. I'm like, oh. But you can, I believe, and I haven't gotten too much of this because I've only been looking at level one stuff. But I believe you can, when you get level up, you can retrain feats. Yeah, Kaim so, and, and I'm not sure. Say... I'm I'm guessing there's a limit to that. Yeah, Kaim and Delvin say uh, correct, and a level four feat means that you need to be level four or more to take it. Okay. So you just need to be at that level or higher in order to take it. So you could theoretically take level one feats the entire time, but they're probably not as good as taking a level seven feat at level seven. I don't know. Catfall sounds pretty damn good. Prerequisite trained in acrobatics. Your cat-like aerial acrobatics allow you to cushion your fall. Treat falls as 10 feet or shorter. If you're an expert in acrobatics, you can treat falls as 25 feet or shorter. And if you're a master in acrobatics, you can treat falls as 50 feet. Treat them as they're 50 feet or shorter. Uh, Kaim right. says also uh, some feats scale. Ooh. So maybe if you take Ooh. it at a later level, it'll scale up to your current level, would be my guess. Well, that's the question. Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you take it at level with your one, proficiency too, as maybe. you grow in levels, it grows kind of with you. So that that is cool. I, I'm digging that. <clears throat> All right. Anyone have any other questions? <laughs> uh, no, uh, yeah, so so here's <laughs> some, something cool that I had. I still have Battle Medicine up on my screen, and on the archives of Nethus website, uh, it has a little thing underneath the the feat that says Battle Medicine leads to, and then it lists three additional feats that have Battle Medic as a prerequisite or Battle Medicine. <laughs> so kind of if you if you had a feat, you could go into that feat and look and see, oh, what's the next cool thing that I can do with this having this feat as a prerequisite so another uh, plug for that website you want to put fun. that uh, what's what's that link genius I'll put it in chat uh, it's all oh, it's a it's 2e dot a on period it's just ar just archives of Nethys n-e-t-h-y-s uh, it's like I think if you search Pathfinder 2e it's going to be the first thing that comes it'll up it'll pop up right away It'll be one of the first websites to pop up. And it takes a little bit to get used to the navigation at first, but if you're just doing searches for stuff, it, it looks, it's pretty simple. Ryan, you said you had many questions. You want yeah, to so <laughs> how do you organize your character? Obviously, the most complex thing about yep. this game is the uh, amazing profundity of options. <laughs> um, how does one organize those options uh, into a cohesive group? Like, am I just supposed to scribble some notes on a notebook? <laughs> and then at the end, hey, guys, I have my character. It's here. And then hold it up to the screen. There are quite a few different options. Um, there is. I mean, if we wanted to go old school, they do have the old school. Like you said, scribble notes. Kind of. This is not the way people do things nowadays. But this is still available. Not what we're going to do. Because we live in a technological age. Um, there are several services out there. The, the most um, official one, it seems, is the Demiplane. But it's not as advanced as far as people would like. The one that I found that I'm going to want us to use is Wanderer's Guide. Which is wanderersguide.app. It has the GM tools to have a campaign and encounter builder. 
it as the character sheet. It it is basically everything that D and D Beyond is for Pathfinder. It does have a dice roll option too, which is kind of nice. I use that on D and D Beyond, and again, roll your mm -hmm. your rolls right on the sheet. The and map. having having made a couple of uh, dummy characters just to see how a Wanderer's Guide works, uh, once you do it like once or twice you kind of get how how it works and there's a little back and forth because uh and this maybe you're going to talk about is uh some of your stats affect how many skills and things you get for example your intelligence in the, the higher your intelligence the more skills and languages you get which are on different tabs so you kind of as you're progressing forward as your intelligence goes up you might have to go back to like the language screen and, and select more or something but uh, uh, there's a lot of the stuff looked like it was right in uh, the Wanderer's Guide. There was a few things where it leaves you a blank box where you can fill in the te like text of your own stuff, but a lot of the basic stuff was in there um, all filled in for you and creates a character sheet similar to uh, any of the other things, or I suppose you could print it out to paper if you really wanted to. Yeah, I'm looking at Goat right now, and it looks, I mean, it almost... It almost looks exactly like, if I'm looking at it, it's not far off from ex exactly what uh, D and D Beyond has for <laughs> layout. I did. Find like, I'm looking in areas for things. I'm going. Oh, all this stuff is. Yeah. If you if you're you know if you're making a level one character, the character sheets are not going to look very much different at all. Your your AC and your uh, a lot of your your bonuses are going to look very similar. I think at level one. Um, you have an uh, actions tab, you have a weapons tab, you have an inventory tab, details about your character, notes, um, all your skills are listed there. Yep. Your and and, uh, are all listed at and making making a character, um, like the, the things you can choose are in a pull down menu, so you don't have to go through the entire list of everything. When you're level one and you get to pick, you know, from your your uh, subclasses or your sub uh, sub race or your ancestry um sorry your uh heritage um you don't have to just like you know pull from everything it, liter it literally gives you the choices you can you can select from and something really kind of cool that i just noticed tom in the gm tools there's a discord bot for fetching content from wanderer's guide via api and properly displaying it and formatting it within discord oh perfect I'll... so if you wanted to uh, <clears throat> poke around with that once we have the campaign set up I'll take a look at that, and I'll, I'll take a look and see if... I, I'm kind of hoping there's a Pathfinder... Uh, like with D&D with Beyond, there was a module for Twitch to where you could hover over the screen and take a look at our character sheets mm. live while watching. I it don't be know if there's anything like that for Pathfinder, but... Yeah. Maybe I'll have to find some way to show that on screen. It looks um, like there's an access code that we could add for our campaign that's in common. Yeah, yeah I can. Yeah, that's each other's information. I can that's how John's looking at one of the ones I made. Yeah, here, let me go to but, the campaigns. Yeah, Ryan, I can. It's the code itself is a little. Hmm, is there a way I can send this to you quickly? It was. Right it was in the. It was in the messenger, but that was probably a few days ago now. Uh, nice. One of the nice things on that sh character sheet I as well, um, both, yeah. Jeff, you had said about going back and forth with tabs when you're creating your character. If you forget to take a language or something like that, when you get to your actual character sheet, there'll be a little warning icon up in the top saying you have an unselected language available to you. And it tells you, you know, go back and, and fill that in. So you do get a little warning if you if you miss something during character creation. Well, you know what I can do? I can do it this way. That is actually very nice. And that it's kind of like it's like the little red exclam or blue exclamation points in uh, D and D Beyond. Here we go, Wanderers Guide. Yeah, yeah, and I, but I don't think D and D Beyond actually has like if you make it all the way to the final uh, view your character sheet, it doesn't tell you that you're forgetting something. Oh. You have to go through all the tabs to see those. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, I, I did because I kept missing the extra languages. I did. Um, too. I was making them. <laughs> I was like, what? What did I do wrong? Where did that language come from? I don't. Bum, bum, ba -dum. <laughs> oh, come on. Um, I'm trying to get you this code real quick, Ryan. I mean, no big deal. We'll no, it, it's a big deal. It's, this is what we're doing, no. dude. 
with the uh, with the campaign, it looks like it looked like, and I didn't really get into it too much, but that the DM can see uh, all of the character sheets, maybe. <laughs> but I don't know if the players can see each other's character sheets. Oh yeah, you first I don't know set up when, on the first page of character creation. There is a toggle for making your character sheet public. That might be, oh maybe that's turn that on. Okay. Yeah. There's also toggles for which rule books you're using. So like, I know yeah. earlier on, you asked about races and things like that. There's so many of them. If you turn the toggle on, so just the core rule book is on, you'll only see the races that are in the core rule book and only be able and, to select those. And for this and first, this utilizing the advanced, whatever rule book or nice. just the core. <laughs> rule book? I was going to say for this first, <laughs> this one shot, this learning, let's just do the core rules. That's the only rule book I turned on, so I think that would be the best just to learn the game. Is Alchemist then... Rick core? Yep. It Alchemist is, okay. is core class. Yeah. Like, I was getting into, uh, I started to mention, and then I drifted off into something else. Go figure. That's me. Shocking. Uh, it, it, yeah. Uh, between D&D &D, uh, &D and uh, Pathfinder, your 12 core classes, take away the Warlock and add the Alchemist. And then change the paladin's name to champion, and that's <laughs> those yeah. are the twelve classes. Uh, there are six races. You have humans, uh, gnomes, halflings, dwarves, elves, and goblins. Those are your six ancestries. Um, from what I, you... from what I'm taking from those ancestries, the world of Pathfinder is a very short world. <laughs> <laughs> They like there, are the only short... two, there are only two classes in, or two races in there that are of normal height, and, and not to, you know to discourage people who are vertically challenged. That would make you think that maybe that's not normal height in Pathfinder, and normal height is short God. and they're tall. <laughs> that could be. That's why they're called long shanks. Due to a lot if of long shanks. Are... Yep. What are the long shanks? If you are looking for a half elf or a half orc, they are heritages of the human ancestry. Yeah, that threw me for a That's loop when I was trying it. to create because I was looking for the half elf at first. I'm like, okay, so there's elf, there's human, there's goblin, there's where the fuck? Why is there? Where did they? And then once you click in it. I think John told me that once you click in it, that's where it is. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah that's some shit. <clears throat> Makes yeah, sense. You got, yeah, they're all humanoid. So, um, with all that being said, I know Jeff and Rick have been extensively chatting about what they're going to do with their <laughs> characters for this <laughs> open introductory campaign, which has me yes. very excited because I, like fire, I said, fire. I, I love Pathfinder goblins so and that kind of spills the beans a bit but would one of the two of you like to take the ball and mention your character concept to begin with oh genius yeah so i was looking uh you know i i've played some uh, barbarians before and uh it's probably one of my top two or three classes to play just because you know you you pretty much know what you're gonna do most of the time and i figured that'd be a safe one to to start off a um up a new system here with so uh and looking at the goblin i thought you know it'll be you know goblins are small typically so i figured like what if this goblin was like a jacked goblin you know everything pumped into strength and and con and kind of just you're you're a, a tall beefy goblin that really doesn't have much for intelligence and so i kind of was going down down that path and uh still trying to figure out exactly what he wants to do but i uh have some pretty good ideas uh and then uh, Rick said uh, he had an idea, and I thought, hey, that fits kind of good with mine. Yeah, I uh, I just concept of, of playing a, a goblin who's just an edge about everything, you know, like hopped up on caffeine all the time, type edgy, uh, a little bit paranoid probably. People are after him and walking around with a sack of bombs just sounded like fun, so... Uh, I'm, I'm definitely looking at, at playing a, a, a artificer bomber here, or a alchemist artificer. I'm going to my three five E again. Alchemist mm -hmm. bomber, I'm blood. So you have some you basically made junk rat and pathfinder. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Well, then Jeff, when you when you said Raceland and Cameron, I, 
I went, okay, sure. But now that, like, that reference came back to me now, and I'm like, oh, yeah. Holy hell, yes. <laughs> this is old, old Dragonlands reference. But Raceland and Cameron, except they're goblins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, uh, you know, my motivation is uh, I, I'm hanging out with uh, with uh, Rick's character because he makes things blow up and they're shiny and loud and I like shiny and loud. Um, and he's probably using me as kind of a uh, bodyguard or something. You know, See you so you as useful. He's yeah. using you for the plus two circumstance bonus of putting you between him and... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that and then somebody made the that. somebody made the comment of the uh, the twins. Uh, was it twins? The movie or the oh, Schwarzenegger yeah. and DeVito? Yeah, yeah, and that uh, that's kind of the visual we're we're going for with that. So, um, right. <laughs> yeah, that brings me to uh, another question that I have generally: is how do you quote unquote roll for statistics, or do you? You don't. How roll. do you organize your character sheet in that way? Um, you don't actually roll for st statistics. The first step is you set all your stats at ten, and then as you like go through you your choose, ABCs. <laughs> yep, you go through your ABCs: your ancestry, your background, and then your class. And your ancestry will give you. You will have a um, bonus to certain things. And you will have flaws to some things. And a flaw is a minus two. And a bonus is a plus two. Or whatever it states. Yeah, it's plus two. Plus or minus two. And some of those will be free choices. So if we go to... Uh, I'll pull up something here. So if we go... Yeah. We're talking goblins. So if we look at the ancestry, goblin ancestry... Um, Gnome. Where's the goblins? So goblin ancestry, their hit points. That's another thing. Your hit points automatically start. You get hit points based on whatever your ancestry was. So hit points start at six. Um, they get ability boosts in dexterity, charisma, and a free one, which means they can choose anywhere uh, to add it. They have an ability flaw in wisdom. So you get a minus two in wisdom. Then you get languages, common, goblin, and additional languages equal to your intelligence modifier. Typically, you wait until the end. And then they also, they have the traits goblin and humanoid and have dark vision. So you get plus two dexterity, plus two charisma, and then a plus two of your choice, wherever you want. And then a minus two in your wisdom. So that comes from being the goblin. So then you have your classes. So Rick is going alchemist. And alchemists. You skip B, right? Oh, I yeah, that. I did. Background. Where's the backgrounds? Ooh, so, backgrounds. Like for for example, a uh, background that I um, decided to choose was um, barkeep. I think barkeep. You have Super. five specialties: hefting barrels, drinking, polishing steins, drinking, and drinking. <laughs> yeah. You worked in a bar where you learned how to hold your liquor and a rowdy and rowdily socialize. Choose two ability boosts. So you get to choose two more ability boosts. One must be to constitution or charisma. And the other one is free. Got it. You're trained in diplomacy skill and the alcohol lore skill. And you gain the hobnobber skill feat. From your background, from being a barkeep. How do you determine what is like your DC skill, for example, like in like in five E? So, for example, if I pick, well, I don't know, a cleric. How would I know what my my skills are based on? Um, as far as what yeah, what to, to your generally your, uh, your class gives you that automatically. Um, some of them you get to choose. Um, but your class typically will give you that. It, so let, let, here, to answer let's your question, with... Ryan, it doesn't sound like you know your athletics is based on dexterity. Like I don't think it it says that directly in when you're creating your character because I created one. 
like I don't think you're gonna have to worry about about what what thing you're rolling for is dexterity or strength. It's just gonna be you're gonna be trained in it, or you're gonna be an expert in it. It's just you're gonna have that in front of you. Um, so it's not gonna matter whether it's a strength check or if it's a this check because it's gonna be a straight up lore check. It's gonna be a straight up athletics so, check, which you know, you know what I mean. Does that make sense? So if you if if you look at the cleric specifically is what you asked for. The key ability is wisdom. At first level, your class gives you an ability boost to wisdom. So it's, and some of them you get to choose between, like a, I think a fighter might choose between dex and strength. Um, and I maybe rogue does something like that too, but most of them it's it's set to one. Um, and then I'm assuming for the spell casting classes, that's the one that sets your like spell casting DC. The equivalent to very very uh, similar in that regards to 5e and and actually the ties to stats are almost the same i think uh wizards are intelligence sorcerers are charisma clerics are wisdom uh, they're they're pretty much this mirror the 5e counterparts okay all right one difference one difference i did stats. one difference between the two games that i came across looking at this uh, is saving throws there's three style saving throws in Pathfinder 2e as opposed to the six that we only ever actually used like three of them <laughs> it's 5e <laughs> sometimes they got into maybe using a fourth one but you have a fortitude save a reflex save and a will slave will save slave? basically will, a, slave? Yeah. <laughs> basically a constitution save a dexterity save and a wisdom save Remember when we first started playing, Ryan? I kept saying will save instead of wisdom save. Yeah. This, this is yeah. why. <laughs> um, uh, while you're on that topic, perception, it was a, in 5e is a normal skill. Uh, in Pathfinder, it's a, it's kind of a separate, uh, separate thing. Perception's a big deal because when you roll initiative, a lot of times you use your perception skill. Oh, let's talk there. about initiative before we close up shop here. Because that seems like something oh, we'll need. No, we'll, we'll get into that as we're learning the game. Okay. I, w I just wanted to focus on uh, a, l a little bit more character concept. You have a character concept, Tom, that you're doing for a character, what you were thinking. Not necessarily. So, I'll figure that out over the next week, though. Yeah, you have an idea. <laughs> or You kind of know where we're... We kind of have half the group set. Yep. Sounds like Ryan's leaning cleric because it's something familiar. Yeah, so I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a human cleric. I'm really impressed with the uh, functionality of a cleric world. I want to be a spellcaster, and um, in my research, it seems like, um, well, and based on your guys' communication today, healing is really critical. We so thank you. I don't want to miss out on that opportunity. So, um, I will be a heal focus um, cleric with a lot of uniqueness and i'll get into that as we go into character oh ryan i love you <laughs> my fellow cleric taking the healer all right so we have a cleric we have a, a barbarian, barbarian and, and, and our art of our, our facilitator -ter. you know what that lines up for you to be you now? going five vegan <laughs> rogue rogue, <laughs> <laughs> rogue. Or yeah. ranger yeah yeah, or if you wanted to test uh, test your spellcasting abilities and go full on wizard or sorcerer or something, and kind of go the. Uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of a toolbox as an alchemist, so you could go for a full arcane caster. And yeah, with a yeah. with with a healer, uh, meat shield, and and uh, um, kind of a ranged. You, you're kind of anywhere if you free. want. I'm free. Yeah, so I th I think in our main line, our our after our. After our, after our introductory story, I think I'll be going wizard in that direction. Um, I think, unless something unless something comes up. But so yeah, maybe I'll try. Uh, I'll see how the rogue plays here. Maybe I'll try because I haven't been a ranger before. I mean, there's a lot of things I haven't been, but I've been there. I'm writing down classes so I can read them. So. Oh. Um, do you want to give us uh, just a brief again maybe this is for everybody a brief intro of not what our characters are but basically what you intend this uh, one shot to be like uh, as far as we're in a certain location we have a certain 
place we're from, where all you know, like with the main campaign you were talking about, transplanting characters from the TBD world into mm-hmm. that. Um, but can you give us a little like what what we kind of are gonna expect as far as you know when we're setting up our little backstories and stuff, kind of a where yeah. we're from and what we're doing. So we, um, not to get into the adventure into our individual characters, but just kind of a, a general sense of things. Yeah. Well, this this uh, the beginning adventure is going to be the adventure out of the beginner's box, which I found as I was reading it really actually teaches the game pretty dang well. So it's uh, Menace Under Otari. Otari is a city on the um, the island that also ha- it's right in the middle of the map of. Um, Galarian. <laughs> Brain farted on the name of the world. Um, that houses Absalom, which is the capital of Galarian. The biggest, biggest, big all, biggie city in all the world. This is a small offshoot in it on the other side of the island. This whole adventure is basically going to take place. Um, one of the locals is having an issue with a uh, um, with I forget specifically what it is let's just say there's a menace it's got a, a pest nu- problem there's a nuisance <laughs> there's a pest problem and lo and behold oh my goodness trophy it leads to a underground tunnel system below the city cool so we're looking urban big city the, this We're, is actually this is small village small village okay small village and kind of my idea behind all this is going to be to introduce you guys to this little village and that this will kind of be the in point from like when we transfer because the whole idea we're staying with folks is we're keeping tbd they're they're planer hopping baby and they're going to import into otari and there's a very similar organization within Path, the world of Galarian and Pathfinder um, to what TBD is. And there may be either some joining of forces or butting of heads as TBD eventually will set up in Otari. And who knows, maybe one day possibly expand into Absalom. So basically what you're telling me is you're Wizard of Ozing, Wizard of Ozing this shit. A little bit. There may be reasons that um, <laughs> that TBD's looking to get out of town. Probably has nothing to do with any of the bullshit we've pulled over the last <laughs> years. <laughs> and the kind of the kind of neat thing about this is, and Rick uh, and tying into our bigger storyline is. is You've played in Galarian before, so some parts of Galarian will be familiar to you. You will be the most familiar with Galarian out of the four of the, you. So Jeff kind of put it on the table that maybe when they bring people in from TBD, you'll be the person they contact. The first. local guide. The local guy. Maybe you're the one. Food for thought. Maybe you're the one that owns the establishment that they will buy from you or rent from you or take over from you maybe you're like broke as a joke i don't know you can play that how you want it but somehow you're from otari you're from galarian and they will come through that however they get there and we'll get into that whole story business eventually we can have some discussion on how you if you want to do that or how you want to step into that depending on how you want your i mean i can make it work if you don't want to be the person that owned anything or is giving anything and you just maybe you're a trusted friend of that person or maybe you're from uh, the sword coast also and uh you just you as a player get to help uh john with yeah the lore. <laughs> yeah maybe maybe you were the emissary for a moment saying hey um this buddy's gonna this is my this is my representative <laughs> Making sure this shit goes right. And of course, shit's going to go left because you're playing hopping. Of course. I, for that campaign, it's I've Easter. narrowed it down to, to two characters, and they're both rogues. So I'll uh, <laughs> talk to John about which one makes more sense. 
kind of lean and... fighter for that. Don't know. We'll see. Yeah. And so, Ryan, if you want to bring anyone with um, any of your characters you played, all of them that you've played, just let me know for flavor-wise who, who's all coming along, because it's going to be an expedition party. And it could be up to, like, 30, 40 people playing hop in here to set up this new establishment. So we'll peruse our backlist of characters we've played and link together in stories and it's Crixus and Marta want does Marta want to come along? Because Marta could absolutely come along. I mean we <laughs> wouldn't go without Marta. They're yep. joined at the hip at this point. Crixus and Marta and a Chwinga will bring a Chwinga into Glarian. I think you said uh, Cri Crixus was maybe looking for a dragon's egg, right? Maybe there's a dragon's egg in uh, Galarian. All right, let's do that. Let's run it. I, I hate I hate to break it to you, John, but uh, Aranon's yep. not going to make this trip. <laughs> I know you that. Three what? parts of him. We'll pour one out for Aranon. Yeah. <laughs> that was a and, show title. Literally and figuratively. Rick, something to consider. I mean... Varus is living lives over and over and over and over again. It's possible. <laughs> Just a thought. Reincarnation of my 5e character. Yes. <laughs> if you wanted to. Fully connect every one of my fucking games together. All right. Um, Ryan, if you wanted to practice as a cleric and then continue as another cleric. that uh... Or continue as the same cleric. Or like, the same cleric. I'll tell you right now, I, I'm excited about the character, and I don't intend to one-shot the character. So Okay. Awesome. Well, okay. if you ask nicely, sometimes a DM lets you be one level higher than the rest of the players. <laughs> That's another yeah. interesting thing, too. You have a, po a, a quick little thing about earning experience. You go to 1,000 points, and once you have 1,000 points of experience, you level up, and then your experience total goes to zero. It's a, it's a really interesting experience system that I might actually track experience. I don't know if I'm going to get that crazy. <laughs> but it's possible. Cool. Well, I think it's about that time, John. What do you think? It is. It is. You want to take us out? You took us in. I was fully prepared to take us in, but I, I know I've getting I... up and walking away. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed. I wanted to see how long it would take you to figure out that we had started the show. <clears throat> So, Didn't take me. we are Two Nerds, One Quest. We are here every Sunday, well, most Sunday mornings, 8.30 a.m. Central Time at twitch.tv forward slash Tom M. Norm, T-O-M-M-N-O-R-M. Join us on our Discord, bit.ly forward slash Our Fun Discord. Uh, have some discussions with us. We talk about stuff other than D&D, Pathfinder, uh, video games. I do web development stuff, so you can always ask me questions there. Writing, music, you name it come join in the fun ask us questions hang out um we'd love to see you there uh, i put the link in chat already uh for that um support the show let other people know about it uh if you are enjoying this experience tell others tweet about it facebook about it bing, bing about it i don't know is bing still a thing i don't know google google plus about it let other people know that you are enjoying the show uh, get the podcast uh, for patrons, patreon.com forward slash two nerds one quest. That comes out on Sundays. The free podcast for all to enjoy that does not have the pre and post show content comes out Wednesday mornings. So be sure to get that. And we don't want you to miss an episode because, I mean, it's not like you can't figure it out and, you know, rewatch the VOD. Uh, VODs, on the other hand, go to YouTube after they disappear from Twitch. Uh, so usually within within a week, the videos go over to YouTube. Videos stay on Twitch for about a month. So there's multiple ways to enjoy this show. With that but if said, you join us live, you get to chat with us, and that's the fun part. And submit statement. titles. And put in. Oh yeah, and if you and vote for titles, live, you get to vote for show titles. So I'm gonna put that link in chat, so that people that are in chat right now can go and vote on our show titles. Uh, and with that being said, for me, for JC, for Genius, for Cooch, and for the newly appointed Rick, I don't know. We'll Indeed. figure that out. <laughs> we'll catch you next week. Got to give him some Rick names. Rick roll him. Oh, jeez. <laughs>
That's hitting the pole. But I still love it because the math is hard. We're back up. <clears throat> what? All right. If you're in chat, go vote on show titles. I'm going to pull that up now. I will read out titles. If you're listening, tommmnorm.showbot.tv. Rick, if you want to go there, uh, feel free. On Twitch. Uh, uh, no, it's a, it's a website. Tommmnorm.showbot.tv. That's where all just of... open a new tab yeah. and you'll see a big list of all our things. You can vote for as many as you like. I typically will vote for three. Rick's gonna help us break ties. Yep. Yeah, you <laughs> just click you just click on the title. Or make ties. <laughs> Alright, so we have uh, I have a shield. Why do I keep getting hit in the balls? Pathfinder <laughs> is math. Math is hard. Watt C. Simplify, maximize, educate. The rule of ten. Pathfinder made by st statisticians. Creepy stair feet. We are the flavor text. Oh shit, shit's moving. Uh, <laughs> hobnobber dying. skills on. Oh yeah. Uh, dying. F oh, dying four is dead. Yep. Uh, don't show your feats on stream. Don't share feats. Height shaming. The first rule of Pathfinder is you don't talk about rolling for stats. <laughs> Talking goblins. And an urban big city village. <laughs> uh, let's see. I can give that one a vote. Yeah. Um, so if you're in chat, go do. vote. Go vote. Go vote. Go vote. <laughs> What's the other one that I chuckled at? Oh, and also I was going to do this at the end of the show. What did you do? What did you? Huh. <laughs> Level up sound. <laughs> it's it's called victory in in Sirenscape. That's all okay. right. But I'm looking and I haven't voted yet, so I'm thinking. I'm thinking I got to vote to make it a tie, right? I mean that feels right. <laughs> so I'm gonna do that one. <laughs> what Jeff typically does. I probably would have voted for it anyway, but. That I have a shield. Why do I keep getting hit in the balls? Made me that made me chuckle good. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a a funny picture in my head. Like Crix is holding a shield up, but way too high. Yeah. Just just getting nailed in the nuts by like a goblin yeah. or a something small. It's a real problem. He gets, yeah. he gets hit in the face if so someone yells out, raise your shield, and he just holds it up over his face and just awesome. still gets pummeled. Real concern. We have a list of uh, classes to read about. It says Barbarian. Well, it doesn't say Barbarian. It says Barbian, <laughs> Alchemist, Cleric, and Tom. <laughs> cleric and Tom. <laughs> That seems I want to. That also I want to read accurate. your glasses out. So who's the Barbian? <laughs> so or Barbian. Yeah. Uh, does, Jeff's that, the Barbian. So, is that a, so, ta some, a tall plastic like character with giant boobs and blonde hair? Yep. That likes to rage. <laughs> is that He Man? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, does He Man have giant boobs? Kinda. They're bigger than mine. <laughs> so, uh, main quest then, it sounded like we we're pretty uh, pretty good on our classes with uh, a rogue, a fighter, a cleric, and a wizard. Oh, um, yeah. I should, that's should actually a, a pretty good party. A rogue, fighter. a fighter, a wizard, and a cleric walk into a bar. <laughs> bar immediately burns down. Jesus. Let's <laughs> 
Oh, wait, is is that actually set? Is that what you guys were thinking of doing? The fighter says, I, I ordered a fireball, not cast fireball. <laughs> so Wizard shrugs and walks out. Um, I'm, right. I'm, I'm set on rogue for sure. Okay. Jeff was the rogue. Because long term, that's the stuff I'm going to want to know. Did you, are you kind of set on fighter for the long campaign, Rick? Kind uh, of? Fighter or barbarian, I'll be some sort of meat shield. Really? I'm kind of kind of between the two of them. I'm, I'm leaning more towards fighter right now. Okay. And then Ryan, Tom's locked into wizard. He's got that idea. Uh, yeah, I'm, and then I, I would say I'm 90% wizard. And Ryan, I love you as a cleric. And I completely get not wanting to switch classes in your situation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, by one. the time I go through creating the lore of the character in my brain, I'm I'm just like I'm not really interested in swapping it out. So yeah, and maybe maybe I could kill some of the <laughs> at the end of at the end of the one shot <laughs> and have the cleric get out. Oh, so we're all just. Fodder now, huh? For Ryan's character building. <laughs> fodder, fodder for lore. Oh, so maybe the, that'll be my character. Be my character fodder. looks across the field. No! <laughs> you He's gonna giant get you. John, just, just for... If I do switch characters, it will be for another caster. I just don't know if I want to stay with wizard okay. or sorcerer or... Okay. But I'm, I'm thinking uh, wizard is probably what I want, though. Yeah, we're, we're just read the magic section of the book because magic's weird. Yeah. I'm going to have yeah. to do that. Spellcasting is different. It's very yeah. different. That's I, I wasn't a spellcaster necessarily in any of the 5e stuff. So for me, it, I mean, I, I you had cast couple... spells, but, you know, it's not you like had I had paladin, right? Some yeah. levels of paladin, but. Yeah. I mean, the, the only... spells themselves aren't horribly different. Um, and the you know it takes two actions or one action to cast a spell, and that's pretty obvious within the within the Wayfinder's Guide what what it takes. It's the prepping, it's the daily prep of your spells and what you have available to you that is very different between the two systems. Mm -hmm. If you guys give me your character names, like if you look on stream, if you go back and look, I have to find a better way to display our names um, so that they're more visible. But I'm overlaying our video our videos with our names and I'll put our character names there too. Instead of instead of taking up a lot of real estate like I did in our previous three years with extra uh, frames and all that, mm -hmm. I'm trying to save some some room in. So that's if you if you see something, if you go back and watch and you see something that you want me to tweak or add or something, let me know. You ready? You ready? But I, th you ready? I think this is a good setup. I think we have a good visible stream. I think is we that our stream. underground map for our adventure? First level of it, yeah. You, you know I'm going to watch the playback and uh, blow that yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> just going to have a handwritten sketch of, of what John just showed. I mean, technically it's the beginner's adventure. It's probably pretty easy to find. So mm -hmm. well, I, if you I'm to go find pretty it. sure it's in that giant list of zip files you have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, were you able to get Rick into that list? Oh, I probably need to share that folder with him, huh? Yeah. It, it, um, yeah, oh, we got a bunch of text to me. We got a so, bunch of well, we got a bunch of PDFs. Of stuff that you can so do we? Uh, do we end up with a winner for show titles yet? Or no, no, we got two nice big tie. <clears throat> Pathfinder is math, and math is hard. So and then I'm... don't show your on stream. Because I am who I am, I'm going to do Don't Show Your Feats on stream because it's my title and if I have to break it, I'm... <laughs> sorry, Elkin, but... I like your title, but. It's just a steadfast rule if Tom needs to break a title and one of his titles is in there, he votes for it. Ah, not necessarily, but <laughs> the, the, the Don't Show Your Feats on stream has probably been in multiple, <laughs> multiple episodes over the last three years. There, there's some history with that yeah, in this yeah. show. John's foot fetish, and I nearly got I nearly got us uh, banned by putting my foot up on the table at one point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, all of that is accurate. I think that went very well having the fifth person here. 
Um, we did minimal. There was only like once or twice where I went, we're kind of getting on top of each other. Mm -hmm. And that's something we'll have to be cognizant of in those moments where we're all laughing. Uh, if we all try and talk, it's gonna, it's gonna get jumbly. Yes. That is very um, And that's when it happened. Honestly, is when, when we laughed about something and we were all saying something. So it's not the worst moment for that to be happening. It's actually probably the best moment for that to be happening. Because it's not affecting the game at all. All right. But the, I think that went very well. Uh, this group meshes very well. Rick, you, you, you slide right in like you've been here the entire time, so... That's what your mom said. I, I've I've adventured with you with Kukta and Jeff, but haven't yeah. adventured with Norm before, so that'll be new. Yeah, but you've you you've done enough bullshitting with Norm. That this, I've done enough bullshitting with Norm. Yeah, that 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 seam is it's just it's sewn together already. So yeah, all accurate. I do like the jams rolling behind rolling behind us, Norm. I must say. <laughs> well, it's jams for today. Just wait till we get into an actual adventure, and then. Yeah, so I like to do cavern music. I like to do music when we're just chatting pre-stream, post-stream, and then once we get into the episode, I do have. Uh, oh, let's see here. Hold on. A couple of settings. There's ambiance. There's. Oh, I have. Yeah, I have. I use Sirenscape. Combat. So oftentimes I'll do dungeon depths and I'll play this. Yeah. Severe yeah. PTSD from that music. Yeah, that just makes Jeff, me think you have flashbacks. Uh, I'm a rabbit with one hand. And holes in your ears? And holes in my ears. Carrying around a naked woman. And let's see here. This is kind of a cool one for. Yeah, all the episodes are out there, Rick. So if you ever wanted to go back and check them out, I've got them cataloged somewhere. So you can. We can find the specific episodes if you need to, but yeah, John's Halloween thriller mm -hmm. from a couple of years ago. That was one where I just kind of wanted to, they had nothing when they began <laughs> and they began in chains <laughs> or we were naked. Yeah. yeah. We were naked yeah, and afraid. In, <laughs> in, a, in a dungeon and the first thing they saw was the pit in the pendulum scenario in front of them. Kind of All right. It doesn't look like there's anybody for us to raid right now. Dunaway usually tends to come on around this time, so I've been kind of stalling to see if he's going to pop on, but uh, uh, he is not. Like like last week, within three minutes of us going offline, I think he <laughs> popped on. Hmm. But All right. That's it. I'm going to shut the stream down, and uh, I got to get going. All right. Bye, Chad. Oh, okay, cool. See you next Thank week. You. Thanks all for right, all the dudes. new people popping in. Uh, it looks like they're ya. out already, but. Yeah, I was going to say, there was some.